Hey garden friends, welcome back to the garden and today we are going to talk about Nepeta, Nepeta, Catmint, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show you how I grow it and how I divide it and why you might want to have it in your garden too. If you're new here, my name is Pam and I garden in the mountains of Northern California in zone 8A. And even though I'm a zone 8, I have a very short growing season with challenging conditions. So if you want to follow along with my adventures, come on along. So Nepeta, Nepeta, Catmint, what is it? It is a plant, an herb in the mint family, though I have not found it to be a bully at all like many mints can and you have to be careful with. I do have one that I will show you after a little bit um, that is has really gotten huge. It was given to me by a gardening friend and I don't know what cultivar it is, but it's a little big. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I don't know if it went to seed, if it would become a bully, so I'm gonna be very careful with it. But there are so many beautiful hybrids that you can grow. This is one of them. This is called Kitten Around, and it stays shorter. Let me see. I'll read the tag and see how short this one will stay. Oops, excuse me. Uh, this is hardy in zones three through eight. This is a ne Nepeta fascinii, and it gets 12 to 14 inches high, 20 to 22 inches wide. I also have, and I that's the first one I fell in love with, was Cat's Pajamas. It's a proven winner selection, and I picked it up on a bargain rack at Lowe's a couple years ago, planted it in the Rose Alley, my rose garden along the side of my house, and uh, loved it. It was one of the first things to bloom in spring when I am struggling to have color in my garden because we start, we have a very late start season. Uh, our last frost date is the third weekend of May. And this year we had so much snow that, that did not melt until the end of April. So it was a late start. I was probably a month later than usual, at least two weeks, if not a month later uh, in things coming into bloom. So the cat's pajamas was just a winner in my garden. I have it planted along the pathway. I'm gonna add more to the other side of the pathway, but it just was something that really brought me a lot of joy when there wasn't a lot going on in my garden. So the cat's pajamas is great. So then I went ahead and got cat's meow. Cat's meow is a little bit taller. It's supposed to not flop, but mine does. And that's because of the tall trees that surround my property. And these are evergreens. They're 200 feet tall and the sun gets behind them at certain parts of the day. And so um, my plants are all usually trying to reach for the sun, especially this time of year. This is late August. Um, but so I forgive it because I do love it. And oh, we had some, we had Hurricane Hillary just this uh, last weekend and it rained very, very hard. So it knocked a lot of things down that normally would not have flopped for me. So that's another reason why the cat's meow, because it just, I had pruned it back and it came back into bloom really quickly. Whereas my cat's pajamas hasn't, but it gets less sun. So I always keep those elements in mind when something doesn't perform as indicated on maybe a grower's site or other gardeners may have uh, no problems in certain areas with them, but it has to do with your growing conditions and not just your zone. So always remember that um, and just work with what you have. I have to work with um, fighting for sunlight, direct sunlight in my garden, and I'm okay with that. I still plant things. So growing Nepeta, Nepeta or Nepeta, they, it likes well draining soil. It does not have to necessarily be rich. You don't wanna give it a lot of fertilizer because then you'll get a lot more foliage and not as much flowering. There's a lot of plants that do well in less than, what do you say, high fertile soil. So watering, you know, they, Nepeta is drought tolerant once it is established. 
but it does well with regular watering if you have it in a bed with other plants that do require irrigation. So keep that in mind. You don't have to water a lot, and if you have it in a dry area or a sandy area, it will do fine. With Nepeta, especially what I've found with mine, um, once the first bloom starts to fade, chop it back. And if you want to keep part of the bloom, like I didn't cut back my cat's pajamas right away. Cut back half and the other half, let it fade and be beautiful. And then you'll get a reflush of new blooms. So it keeps them pretty and brighter. Now the faded blooms are pretty in themselves. So at least I found it to be so. But um, go ahead and trim it back. You'll get a re-bloom, especially if you have a nice hot area or you get a lot of sunlight onto directly onto your garden beds. Now, um, the amount of sun they require, it is recommended six to eight hours. Um, some of my garden beds barely get six and it does okay, so keep that in mind. You can mulch. Mulching around uh, your cat mint or your other plants even, that helps conserve soil, I mean conserve soil, that helps conserve water and you won't need to irrigate as much as well as suppress weeds. We all don't like weeds but that helps to suppress the weeds. Every few years, you may need to, or want to, divide your Nepeta to keep it healthy and hardy. Because a lot of times they'll get a die out in the center, and so it's growing around a dead center. So you just, you'll dig it up and divide it, and I'll show you how I do that. And the great thing about that is you can transplant it into other parts of your garden where you would like to fill in, or even try it in a different area. Let's go on out and I'll show you how you can propagate Nepeta in your garden and get more plants. So I'm hoping this isn't too much in the shadows for you. I probably should wait till it's less bright here, but I wanted to get this done. So here's a, this is a ground cover daisy right here, but this is the cat mint that I want to move. But if you didn't want to dig it up, Another way to propagate it is pull away some area and you can see here over this, this is, you know, all the way around here, you know, it's a pretty good size, like four inches around at the base. So you could come in like with a garden knife, separate out some of the stems and then just cut down. You could also do this with a trowel and cut away that piece. And hopefully I have roots. And I do. Ooh, I even have a piece, a rooted piece here. Oh, wow. Going way over there. I may even try to plant that and see what it does. It's got a little shoot coming up. But, so look at this roots. And, and I can pull it apart and have two or even three. That does not have roots. You can have two I could put, oh yeah, there's three. See how it just comes apart? This one, that piece does not have a root on it. But you see, I have three pieces here. And then I will just take, I'll just pour some of it out. This, I will set it down in here and I will fill it back up with the soil. And I'll do that with all of them. And then I'll go put this over in a spot where I'm starting a bunch of things. And I will cut off the flowers and stuff so it could put energy back into the roots. And that is how you easily propagate Nepeta. Now I'll go ahead and you could also, if you want to, I've planted it around the garden directly in the soil. You could also do that. Um, this way, when you have it in the pot, you can decide where you want it later. And right now, you know, just, I wouldn't have to transplant it right away. Let me see if that piece has a root on it. Nope. Now, I've not tried to root it in water or root. I'm sure you could root the cuttings if you desired. So now I'm just gonna dig up this whole thing and I'm gonna transplant it. I'm getting way down. Boy, those roots are deep. I don't want to, I guess we'll just pull it up. So here I pulled up the whole plant and I, 
I want to plant, replant the whole plant, I'll just go plop it in somewhere else. And or I'll go ahead and finish dividing it out. See, here's a clump here that I could pull away and have plenty of roots on it. And the same. So yeah, I could get plenty of pieces off of this and go ahead and transplant them. And maybe I'll put them out in the front bed where I planted the kitten around and see how it grows there. That's weed. Alrighty, so that's how you divide and or propagate Nepeta. Pretty simple, huh? So this is a bed that I have been working on this summer and it's not in the best of shape, but I am gonna go ahead because I want the Nepeta along the edge of it. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in and put it on in. Now I had dug up some irises from here and I laid them here so I'd know which color was what. And it's just not been priority. So it looks like it. But I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, and put this in here and it might give me the impetus to get in here and finish this bed. Earlier in the season, I had taken out some raised beds that had lining. Oh, I could use that. I was looking for a stake yesterday. And so it, the gophers have been really bad in this bed. And so that's a really good place for the nepeta here because the gophers will not bother it. So some of the smaller pieces I was going to go ahead and put in pots so I'd have get some plants from it for other places. That's a weed. So that one, that's two little ones. I could plant all of them, but I was going for some bigger ones. Yeah, let's just go ahead and divide these out as best I can and put them in the ground. So that's a big chunk. And I'm gonna put these about, I'd say 18 inches apart. I could really tell the gopher in there. And I didn't bring my cutters, but I will come back and I will trim these back so that they will put their energy into root production. These, these are ageratums, not ageratums, I'm sorry, verbascums, and they have just taken off. I should have put them closer to the center of the bed. Now that's the ones I wanted to put in pots. So I'm just getting these planted up. Now yeah, there's two good sized ones in here. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video on Nepeta, Nepeta, Catmint, and how you can grow it, divide it, propagate it, prune it, all of the fun stuff, and make it a beautiful element in your garden to enjoy. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to show you the big monster in my garden. Let's go look at that. Look at this thing. It's massive. It is, uh, well, six feet tall. It's got beautiful light, light lavender, pinky lavender blooms, but it's six feet wide as well. And this is a nepeta. So like I said, I don't know if it'll come back from seed, what have you, it is uh, starting to crowd out other things. So I'm gonna prune it up and uh, see what it does, but it may have to go, I don't know. Fortunately, that part of the road doesn't have a whole lot on it, so uh, it's okay for now, but there are things back there that I want to grow. Um, right now, it's not a problem. It's in an area that there's not a whole lot of stuff, but there is stuff I want to put there alongside the road. So this most likely will go. I can put it out on my back hill side where I have room for things like this and see what happens, but the pollinators love it. And so, but that's my monster, my monster Nepeta in my garden, the mystery monster. Thank you.